I guess any place is a good enough place to be buried, but this just seems so desolate. Wonder Hussy here, <laughs> live again in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I'm actually right outside a place called Death Valley Junction, which is aptly named as it sits at the junction of two highways leading to Death Valley. And it's probably best known as the home to the world famous Amargosa Opera House, which is this really awesome, really kooky old opera house, sort of built and maintained by this ballerina from New York City, who was traveling through Death Valley back in 1968, I think, and her rig got a flat tire at the site of Death Valley Junction. So she had to hang out for a few days, I think, because back then there weren't any tire shops in the area and to be honest there still really aren't <laughs> so she had to wait there for a few days and I guess over the course of that time she fell in love with the area because boy it really is this beautiful desolate valley and before you know it she bought the old I guess it was an old hotel and boarding house or something on the site and moved from New York City out here to the middle of nowhere and she lived out there until, gosh, she only died a few years ago. But what was really cool about it is uh, for much of that time, she was alone. I think she got divorced or I'm not sure her husband couldn't handle the solitude, so he bailed. She lived out here till the end of her life. And every Saturday night, she would dance ballet in this opera house that she built. And many of the nights, there was no one in the audience to watch her. So she painted this fake audience on the walls of the opera house. If you go inside the opera house, you can do a tour. There's this awesome, really well done mural all on all the walls, all around of, of uh, box seats. Like at an opera house of people watching the show in fancy dresses and the guys are all wearing tuxedos. And man, it's a really cool mural. It's a beautiful theater. She danced on stage, gosh, well into her 70s, maybe even 80s. Uh, so that was, that's what the town is best known for. Unfortunately, they're very private about uh, shooting footage there. They don't allow any, uh, you know, YouTube junk like this because they've had bad experiences in the past with like those ghost hunter shows because it's a supposedly a haunted hotel now and some ghost hunter show went on there and took advantage of them and once bitten twice shy they don't let anyone shoot video there anymore unfortunately i would love to show you the inside of that opera house but as it is you're just gonna have to go out here and take a tour for yourself sometime it's well worth it but aside from just being an awesome random tiny little town in the middle of nowhere with this bizarre opera house run by a new york city ballerina <laughs> as if that weren't enough this uh, old busted gas station facade might also be recognizable to you as having been featured in the David Lynch movie Lost Highway. I've actually never seen that movie myself but from what I hear it takes place in Los Angeles and they just used this random desert gas station as a stand-in so I'm not sure about all that I just know that this is the gas station and Again, they don't allow, I don't even think they allow you to film anything around that. Like they're very, mm, I don't know what the word is, protective, I guess, of this town. So that's why I'm not walking around pointing stuff out. But there is a little something on the outskirts of town that is perfectly fine to shoot as far as I know. And that is this awesome old pioneer cemetery. I didn't even know this was out here until my friend Larry tipped me off that there's some, supposedly some really cool old graves in here. And it looks like there are for sure, like 
Oh man, I don't know. This is just a lonely little graveyard. I'm sure it's going to have some interesting graves. So I thought, since I'm passing through the area anyways, might as well stop in and take some, uh, take some video and see what we can find. Okay, the first noteworthy thing about the cemetery is, look at the cracked, parched earth that these poor bodies were buried in. Can you imagine digging a grave in this stuff? It's got to be pretty tough. Looks like somebody was here for Christmas and left a little stocking for the deceased. That's cute. All right, so now we're in this graveyard. It's basically just a rectangle fenced in to keep out the tumbleweed, I suppose. It looks like the real old graves are over on that side. And then it looks like there's some more modern graves on this side. Now, as for the ballerina, Marta Beckett was her name. I don't think she's buried here. As a matter of fact, I don't think she's buried anywhere because uh, I think she was cremated and they scattered her ashes somewhere. Um, and actually, side note, I took a tour of the Opera House about a year ago and the guy who gave us the tour told us that she was really fond of the wild horses that lived in this area and she would always feed the wild horses, leave food out for them, and the wild burrows. But I guess after she passed away, the wild horses uh, didn't come back. And so all the people in town were like, oh no, what happened? Well, I don't know, a year, two years after she died, the horses came back and there was a little baby horse with them that was just the right age to have been born right when Marta Beckett died. So they were kind of speculating that maybe that little baby horse was her spirit reincarnated. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if I got all the details in that story right, but it was something along those lines. So don't quote me on it. If you want all the details, go down to the Amargosa Valley Opera House and ask them for yourself. All right, starting on the new side, this guy here died. He lived 1909 to 1964. This man who ever thought of others lives on in our memory. Oh, that's cool. Perk Edward Rogers. All right, so 1964. This one here, she died in 85. Oh, here's a World War II and a Korea vet, Marine Corps vet. Passed away in 73. Wow. This guy also died in 73. So this side, yeah, these, these graves aren't that old. I don't know, though. Look at this one. This looks pretty old. But the sign is illegible so we'll never know oh what a lonely little grave look and the only thing on this grave is this old soggy woodstock doll that's sad oh man i wish i had something to leave here for this poor lonely grave i can understand why people want to be cremated because what if you just end up in this poor lonely grave that no one ever comes to visit and all? i don't know man Ugh. all right we're just gonna move along through here oh she died in 25 that's kind of old wow Marciana Robles. I wonder what she did out here. And then these graves here, they don't even have signs on them. Look at that. Look at this. It's just like a mound of dirt with some rocks around it and a little flower in a vase. Holy cow, that's so sad. Look at this old wooden cross. Sister Dorothy Vazquez died 1938. Holy moly. Wait, it says born 38 and died 38. Oh, it was a baby. Oh no. Look at this, some classy person left a Corona bottle cap on her grave. I'm sure she appreciates that. She was a baby. Have some respect, people. Okay, look at this one. Edward Novak. Died in 1993. I wonder if he's related to Rock Novak, the caretaker of Ballarat Ghost Town. Interesting. And then Jean Cornegay, same kind of headstone. They might have been related. Interesting. All right, well, now let's move over to what I assumed was like the real old side of the graveyard. I mean, there were some pretty old graves over there, so... Gosh, I can't imagine these. Goldstein, 1919 to 1988. Boy, that tombstone looks a lot older than 1988. Wow. thought it was going to be like 1788. Whoa, look in here. These look like they're real old. Oh, it's like a little family plot. It's gated in. I like how these families want to stay together, even in the afterlife. Boy, the names and information are just totally worn away here so you can't see anything at all anonymous family buried together that's sad man these old pioneer graves the headstones are so weathered away you can't read any of the names it's really a bummer i mean maybe there was never even a name on this it's just a a wooden cross made out of two old weathered pieces of wood. Look at this. Oh, what a 
melancholy place to be. You know, let me just stop and do a quick pan. I mean, look at this. I guess any place is a good enough place to be buried, but this just seems so desolate. Okay, one last grave we didn't check out, and this is really sad little fenced in. Oh, brother. I don't know who's buried here. Long forgotten name, but it almost looks like it was a kid's grave because look at that little child's flip-flop. I don't know. Sad. Wow, really haunting place, but worth a stop to visit. You know, if you're passing through here and you like to pay your respects to our pioneer forebears, stop in here and have a look. But remember to latch the gate behind you because you don't want the spirits to get out.